All right, back on the same job from the first couple videos a month or two ago, and this will be fun. Change of plans. Now this face that was going to be shot creeded is now instead going to be sloped, and for a number of reasons, we're doing that mostly from the top until we run out of reach. And then I'll finish it from the bottom. It's got to be a one-to-one -one slope. It's got to be pretty much right on the money for a couple of reasons. Um, and so I'm going to show how I lay that out and then how I dig it and then how I verify that I have actually done it. All right, what I'm doing now is I have a total station set up over a control point. I have another control point a few hundred feet to the east. Both of them are of known coordinate, location, elevation, etc. So I get myself tied in. All the building uh, locations have been established relative to this coordinate system. And so once I'm tied in, I'm going to start laying out up here on the bank. Okay, hopefully that's focused and you can read it. That's the slope stake screen on Serve CE. I just took a shot at the kind of the apex of the slope where two building wall slopes are going to come together and it's telling me out 0.083. So that means I'm within an inch of my point. 0.083 feet being one inch. So what I do is I stake that point and paint a line between it and a series of other points and you can see that there's a a divergence, right? It diverges away from the pad as the bank height gets higher because that's the nature of a slope. So I marked that and now I've got a guide to dig to. I've already done some on the previous afternoon and got about 60 feet dug out doing the same thing and it works out exactly as intended. So now I'll continue on. All right, so I got my helper cutting the slope. And at this point, it's just a question of connecting the upper and lower marks. So the lower marks are laid out. They are the catch point of where the one-to-one -one slope begins. And then the upper marks on the bank from earlier are laid out. So he can't see the lower marks, but he uses the adjacent slope as a gauge. And then when he gets close, I guide him if he's, uh, if he's off a little bit. But he's actually pretty good at this. Some people have an eye for it, some people don't. Some people can see grades and levels and elevations. Some people can't, but he can. So I let him do it. He needs practice anyway, I've done plenty of this. So what we'll do is we'll dig over until we get close to where the manhole sits, dig around it, leave a column of, uh, of rock, dirt, shale, whatever this stuff is, weathered rock. Uh, and then we'll cut down to the invert grade of the manhole uh, and leave a little flat platform there. That way the manhole will be sitting on undisturbed. That pink dot higher up, the single pink dot on the bank, that is invert grade. Then when uh, the guy that's doing the rest of the site work catches up, he can put it, um, he can put it on grade. It'll be another 8 inches or 10 inches of cut after that. So that's how we do it. All right, we got that corner finished and just continuing to go down the line. Got to make it all the way down to that corner down there. About 130 or 40 feet. The slope gets taller by a few more feet. Going to run out of reach. Uh, so at that point, we'll have to like dig half of it from the top and half from the bottom. That's a little bit tricky, making sure the slopes tie together and you end up with a continuous one-to-one. -one. But just lay an intermediate point out somewhere in there to use uh, to connect them together. I think the real issue will be uh, whether we hit rock or not, undiggable rock. I've got a hammer here, but that'll slow things down if we have to keep switching back and forth. I think the real thing that'll slow it down, like I say, is the reach of the machine. But whatever, that's the machine I've got to use. It's a rental, it's all they had. So I'm just gonna make it, uh, make it happen.
All right. Well, that went okay. Good as could be expected. Got another 50 feet or so dug out. This little spot right here is where there was a big rock that cleaved off. You could see kind of the cleavage plane of the rock. Anyway, I got the little shelf cut in for the manhole to sit on. The installer can trim that to the actual uh, final grade. I've just got it set to pipe invert now. He'll have to lower that down another 10 inches or so for a precast base. But tomorrow, before we get too much further along, I'm going to stop and clean out all the footing. So the footings were, maybe you could see earlier in the video, full of flowable fill. The, the actual concrete footing has not been poured yet. When we dug these, they broke out so rough uh, that the engineers and geotechs decided to pour flowable fill. The center line of the wall is this white dot here. Uh, <clears throat> the concrete guys, they'll form on top of the flowable fill, cast a footing, and uh, then they'll, you know, embed all their steel. There's the other actual wall corners, that dot. Embed their steel, tie their walls in, etc. And the walls go all the way up to the top of this, 20 some, 20 feet, I guess. So there's your flowable fill. So anyway, all in a day's work. A little bit different, unusual maybe. Maybe you do things differently where you live. If you do this kind of work, maybe you're part of the country, they do things differently. 